Hi, my name is Ben and I'm a little paper cutout and I will be today helping you get a good orientation. This is the middle ear cavity. It is supposed to be like a room for your understanding. Otherwise, it's a very small space. The middle ear cavity from this side. This is your external auditory canal. This is the lateral wall of the middle ear. We have cut out the top portion. The roof of the middle ear cavity is formed by a thin plate of bone called tegment tympani. It also extends posteriorly to form the roof of the aditus and antrum. It separates the tympanic cavity from the middle cranial fossa. The middle cranial fossa is superior to the middle ear cavity and therefore the tegment tympani is able to separate the two. But in case of any middle ear infection, the infection can easily travel through the tegment tympani into the temporal lobe causing temporal lobe abscess. The floor of the middle ear cavity is also a thin plate. It separates the middle ear cavity from the jugular bulb and the jugular bulb traverses anteriorly. Sometimes this floor is congenitally deficient and therefore the tympanic cavity is separated from the jugular bulb. It is only separated by mucosa. Anterior wall also has two openings. The lower one is for the eustachian tube which connects the middle ear cavity with the nasopharynx and therefore the infections from the nasopharynx can easily travel retrograde up to the tympanic cavity and cause rhitis media. The superior one is for the tensor tympani muscle. The function of tensor tympani muscle to dampen sound in case of noises. So if we remove the lateral wall, lateral wall with respect to the tympanic cavity, we can see clearly the anterior and the medial wall of the tympanic cavity. So continuing with the middle ear cavity, medial wall it is also known as labyrinthine wall because it is moreover formed by the labyrinth I explained you earlier the upper opening is for the tensor tympani muscle and the tendon of this tensor tympani muscle goes around in the medial wall wraps around the processes cochlearyformis just anterior to the oval window just anterior to the oval window the medial wall presents a hook-like projection called processus cochlearyformis. This tendon is of the tympani muscle which wraps around the processus cochlearyformis and then it gets inserted at the handle of malleus. Here you can see the handle of malleus. It gets attached over here. So basically it originates from here wraps around the process is cochlearyformis and attaches to the handle of malleus. It presents a bulge called promontory which is due to the basal coil of cochlea. As you can see here, this has a major bulge-like projection. Since it's a 2D illustration, you cannot make out, but yes, you, you'll have to believe me. There is a bulge over here and therefore, it is named as promontory. It is the basal coil of the cochlea. The oval window is the place where the uh, foot plate of stapes is attached and inferior to it we can find the round window where the secondary tympanic membrane is present. Superior to the oval window you can see the bony canal for facial nerve. In certain cases this bony canal is dehiscent, making the facial nerve traveling within this canal open and uh, vulnerable to injuries and hence infection. As you can see above the canal for facial nerve, which is also known as follicular canal, there is a prominence of lateral semicircular. The superior wall lies close to the mastoid air cells. It presents a bony projection called the pyramid, through the summit of which appears the tendon of the stapedius muscle to get attachment to the neck of stapes, which is attached over here on the oval window. Aditus is a physiological opening present in the posterior wall of the middle ear cavity, which is an opening through which attic communicates with the antrum. This lies above the pyramid. The facial nerve runs in the posterior wall just behind the pyramid and the facial recess or the posterior sinus is a depression in the posterior wall lateral to the pyramid. It is bounded medially by the vertical part of the seventh nerve 
laterally by the chorda tympani and above by the fossa incudis. Surgically, facial recess is an important landmark as direct access can be made through this into the middle ear without disturbing the posterior canal wall and this is utilized in the intact canal wall technique. There is another important structure or recess present. This is known as sinus tympani and this recess is important as during clearing of the ear for example during uh, cholesteatoma we need to clear the entire infection from this recess as well as it is difficult to access and the disease can hide in this recess the lateral wall of the tympanic cavity is largely formed by the tympanic membrane and to a lesser extent by the bony outer attic wall called as the scutum. The tympanic membrane is semi-transparent and forms a window into the middle ear. It is possible to see some structures of the middle ear through the normal tympanic membrane. Example, the long process of the incus, the incudust pedial joint and the round window to some extent and maybe even corda tympani. This is what the lateral wall looks like.